assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to the summary lectures of introduction to management and in this lecture we will cover week number 12 lecture number 23 and 24 students from previous week we have we started the second function of the management which was organizing and in organizing we studied two main points number 1 work specialization and number 2 departmentalization now we will come to the third point which is called chain of command chain of command is basically a line of authority which comes from the top level to the bottom level so this is the chain the authority or the order comes from the top to the bottom and ultimately it reaches to the lowest level so how many or uh, how many or uh, whatsoever the levels or how many levels are there in a management we see that a chain of command gives direction from top level and the demand or the directions reaches to the to the lower level ultimately when we talk about chain of command where we have seen that a line of authority which comes from top level to low level we have to understand three different things number 1 authority number 2 acceptance of authority and number 3 responsibility students when we talk about the authority it means freedom to take decisions authority refers to the rights inherent in a position a manager position to tell people what to do and what what to do and to expect them to do it normally authority means there is a formal position of a person to take decisions and to direct others if any person for example mr a is boss and he has 3 b c and d he has 3 subordinates and he gives uh, he gives orders to all of them it means he is using his authority along with his authority there should be acceptance of authority in the minds of the subordinates for example b c and d they have to accept the authority of the boss who is mr a so along with the authority we should have the acceptance of authority if they do not accept the authority they will not obey the order then the chain of command will not perform will not will not be performed or will finish will finish in the way next responsibility responsibility means when managers use their authority to assign work to employees those employees take on an obligation to perform those assigned duties this obligation or expectation to perform is not responsibility so when b c and d they have to accept the authority of the boss then they feel responsible they feel themselves responsible to perform the duty which is given to them so students let's move to the other topic which is line authority and staff authority this line authority and staff authority is very important topic in line authority when your immediate boss gives you directions boss or supervisor gives you direction to perform any duty this is called line authority and what is staff authority when you get help from the other departments
so sorry for sorry for the pause okay ji students when your immediate boss gives you direction to perform any job or any task related to your own duty or related to your own department it means your boss is using line authority on the other hand when any other department helps you to complete any duty or any performance with the any activity of line authority this is called staff okay let me give you an example and then we will see the dif uh, the differences first of all this is called line authority this is called staff authority line authority is vertical where boss gives you orders directions here in staff authority he does not give you order direction he give you suggestions or he gives you assistance so students in line authority the command is vertical but here there isn't any command there isn't any order but they use assistance suggestions advice or guidance okay some uh, there are some key differences for example line authority is vertical and staff authority is horizontal next line authority relies on commands orders as i've told you on the other hand staff authority is based on advice and uh, uh, advice and commands but basically they give suggestions number 3 as you talk about discipline line authority is strict line authority is your since he is your immediate boss you have to follow or you have to obey him but in staff authority it is very loose discipline you may accept the advice or you may not accept the advice this is not compulsory for you to act upon number 4 line organization line executive are generalist who is directly responsible for accomplishment of the ob objective on the other hand staff organization staff executives are specialist who support or advise line managers in the accomplishment of the organization objectives so here they just help and assist you but in line authority they are responsible to get task completed by you number 5 there is there is centralization in line authority centralization means boss gives you order boss does not ask you but conversely in staff organization they give you there is low centralization or basically there is centralization basically they just give you advice or suggestion and sometimes they ask you they do not impose their decision on you number 6 line organization the uh, is the is good for small corporations in small organization where the number of employees are very low in these organization we prefer line organizations but on the other hand we organize we, uh, in large uh, in large organizations we prefer uh, staff authority or staff management where we should not impose things very strictly so here we you can see the executive director who is giving direct orders to anybody like director and like these are are uh, these are all line management then the director gives order to unit 1 unit 2 this is line authority when unit 2 manager gives order to operation manager these are line authority this is line authority but if operation manager takes help from other human resource department and purchasing department other departments this is called staff authority who only assist them to complete the task given by the manager next next we have span of control span of control span of control means deciding how many individuals are working under one manager for example i am a manager in abc company and i am supervising mr a mr b mr c so i am supervising three individuals so it means i i am the supervisor of three people or i am directly managing the tasks of three people it means my span of control is three at the same time if i have if i have d and e so now we i have span of control of five 
so spinal control mean simply deciding how many individuals are supposed to be supposed to work under one manager this is called span of control so it is very important to understand the span of control structure when describing an organization simply span of control refers to the number of subordinates under one manager how many subordinates should be should work under one manager for example he is a manager and 1 2 3 4 and 5 so the span of control is 5 or 5 span of control is called narrow span of control for example if there are plus 5 and plus 5 and plus 5 it means total 20 individuals under one manager so this is not a wide this is not narrow span of control it will become a wide span of control like take the example here okay here it is a wide span of control where one manager is is responsible to give task to 34 individuals so his span of control is wide span of control so let's move to our next topic okay we can see the here when there is a wide uh, when there is a narrow span of control in narrow span of control we also call this tall organizational structure and when there is a wide span of control we call this a flat structure let's see pros and cons of both structures first of all we will see the pros of wide span of control wide span of control means this flat organization encourage delegations manager must better delegate to handle large number of subordinates uh, manager should understand that there is a large number of people who have to be controlled by him number 2 agile improves communication speedy quality speed of speed and quality here we need to improve the speed quality and communication number 3 reduces cost more effective because of fewer level since there are fewer levels only one or two levels as we have seen here only one two levels here so this uh, you can see only one or two levels many people are controlled under only one or two levels so this is very speedy work or it reduces cost also number 4 helps prevent the workforce from disengaging by focusing on empowerment autonomy and self direction so the people are not uh, are not fighting for the autonomy and power they are under one manager cons there are some diff, dis, uh, there are some disadvantages number 1 high managerial workload comes with high span of control when there is a high span of control it means one manager has to manage different so many people so it means it requires uh, high level of responsibility and it also increases the workload number 2 role confusion most likely and basically role where is gets very confused because so many individuals are there to be controlled by one manager so his role can be very much complex number 3 may cultivate distrust of management there may be distrust of management because they should they should make diff, more managers to control uh, different people they are not making different levels they are not making more levels they are not making more managers so it means there is a distrust in management and employees also uh, do not also do not trust on the managers number 2 we will discuss the uh, span uh, pros and cons of tall organization means narrow span of control more rapid communication between small teams since there are only only 1 2 3 4 people under me so i can have very fast communication with them number 2 groups are smaller and easier to control so the groups are very small so i can control them very easily number 3 there is a great degree of specialization and division of labor so there are four people under me so i have given them different tasks and everybody is specialized of his duty as we have already studied work specialization and division of labor number 4 may more and better opportunities for employees to get promoted the one who is who performs well well will be promoted so we have many we have very good opportunities for individuals to get promotion cons number 1 communication can take too long hampering decisions since they are tall <laughs> organizational structures and in tall organizational structures it takes too long to 
make any decision so it is very because of the bureaucratic style of this uh, system the decision takes too long to be finished or to be completed so it is very problematic number 2 silos may develop and prevent cross functional problems cross functional problems arise because they will consider their own function important they will give importance to their own functions and they will definitely get involved in the conflict with other departments number 3 employees may feel lost and powerless sometimes as we have seen that the request of this person will reach to the top level very late coming because of uh, communication distance and differences so he will feel himself helpless and powerless because he cannot do or he cannot take decision because decision to be get taken at the top level and this request will take too long to reach at the top level so students here we can see the here we can see the span control here we can see the span control of four people and here we have a comparison of span control with eight of eight, eight people so when we have large span of control means eight people then we can manage one two three four and five levels and we can manage at in five levels we can manage 4096 people on the other hand, on the other hand where there is a narrow span of control 4096 people if we have to manage 4096 people we have to make 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 levels so this structure will become tall and this is relatively wider the last topic students of this week is centralization decentralization centralization decentralization means centralization means when the manager takes decision of his own he does not ask his subordinates to get involved in the decision De uh, decentralization means democracy democracy means when manager takes decision with the help or with the suggestion of the subordinates this in this style this is autocratic this is called autocratic style and this is called democratic style here boss takes decision and he tells at the lower level here boss does not take decision of his own he asks lower departments for the suggestions and he takes decisions after giving after taking the suggestions from the subordinates okay after understanding centralization decentralization we will see the difference between the both in next slide so here when there is an organization which is centralized or more centralized and here we will there are so organization we are more we, uh, which are more decentralized so in more centralized environment is stable and more decentralized environment is complex stable means we do not expect uncertainties or diff, uh, or uh, confusions and complexities but here we see different complexities where we cannot wait for the top level top level management managers to to solve the problem we solve the problem at the lower level L and we make decisions at the lower level lower level managers are not capable or an experience that make decisions sometimes we do not ask lower level managers managers just because they are not capable of taking decisions on the other hand lower on the other hand on more decentralization the lower level managers are capable of doing making decisions number 3 more centralization lower level managers do not want a say in the decisions sometimes lower level management do not want if they even if they are capable of of uh, making decisions they do not want a say in their organizations but here in decentralization lower level management lower level managers they want a say they want to have their say in the decisions number 4 decisions are relatively minor sometimes if there is minor decision then a boss do not ask uh, ask uh, subordinates but here when the decisions are significant and important and larger than and bigger then they have to ask the lower level manager also also here organizations is facing a crisis and risk of company failure when there is a crisis or there is a chance to f of uh, company's failure then companies do not indulge their lower staff to involve in the decision making but on the other hand corporate culture is open to allowing managers 
to say in what happens but here uh, corporate in corporate culture we allow uh, juniors to make decisions company when company is large company do not ask lower level to take to take part in decision making again and again number 2 company is geographically dispersed as we have seen geographical organizations as we have seen the examples of sarl pakistan in previous week next effective implementation of company strategies decisions may uh, depends on managers retaining say over what happens so there should be authority there should be a say of the managers whatever managers are saying they should it should be adopted number 1 number 2 uh, in decentralization come effective implementation of companies strategies depend on managers having involvement in flexibility to make decisions so these are basically the differences of both Uh, decentralization and centralization so here our week number 11 is over so we will meet you again with week number sorry week number 12 is over we will meet you again with week number 13 thank you very much